to my channel. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow Motivation. I'm back with a with a kind of a, a inspirational, motivational video, a warning video because this is something that just needs to be uh, put out there. First of all, I want to talk about uh, we as women, we as women that act like we don't have no control over our body our mind, or anything. You know, to me, I see that it then became so accustomed that women, that they are willing to sacrifice their own soul, their own salvation, just to have a man. When the Bible clearly says it's a man that finding a wife, find a good thing. You know, instead of, of us going by that standard and being obedient uh, to God's word, we decide to go out here and and find our own thing. You know, we find our own good thing. But it ain't just that when we find our own good thing, we bring it to, um, we bring it to, to, uh, we try to force it on other people. And that is, that's just not good. If you decide that you want to be with, uh, that person, with that man, uh, and you want to uh, become the um, the sole the sole provider. To me, you are trying to be the sole provider when you if you don't have nowhere to stay, and you take uh, that man that you with, and you try to force him on somebody else. Like if you trying to get find somewhere to stay, if you don't have nowhere to stay, just say it like that, and we gonna just call. A spade, a spade, and let it be the truth, because it is the truth. Y'all excuse my hair, but uh, hey, I'm doing what I got to do this morning. I'm being obedient. But if you don't have nowhere to stay, and somebody give you somewhere to stay, it's not right that you try to bring your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or uh, whatever you call yourself, because it's not your husband and you're not the wife. Now, let's get to... Uh, well, uh, Proverbs 18 and 22, it say, For a good spouse, you find a good life, and even more, the favor of God. Now, let's go to, uh, I want to go to Proverbs 18. Let me see. And read that. Because it is so good to, um, Just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay. It says, find a good spouse and you find a good life and even more the favor of God. But that is not what I want. Uh, I'm trying to find it in, uh, let me get the Bible, because that, that's why I don't be doing the, the phone, the internet stuff. We, I need to find Proverbs, I need to find Proverbs, so how's everybody doing? Look, if we don't have no control over this tongue. We don't have no control over nothing, not no part of our body. And I'm going to tell y'all about that too, because it's time to get real. Look, this world is coming to an end. I don't know when. Now, I'm not saying when, because I don't know. If I say I know when, that make me a liar. And God say a liar can't even tear in his sight. So I'm not going to say when. I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, let me see. Where is it? It say, "Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth the favor of the Lord." If a man that find a wife find a good thing, and in in that he also find favor in the Lord. So, if you got you a boyfriend, and you know you don't have nowhere to stay. Y'all struggling out there. 
that should be, to me, I feel like that should tell you something that that is not the person that God have for you. Because God is not going to put nobody unequally yoked with nobody. When we get with these peoples and we marry them, and the first thing we'll say is God put us together. Now, God don't put our marriages together. No, he don't. Because let me tell you something. If God, if God done called you to be a minister or a missionary, or I'm I'm trying to use everything I can think of that make gonna make this make sense. If he done called you to be um just say if he called you to be a, a bartender. Now listen, I just don't think that God if he called you to be a missionary or a minister or a prophet or a teacher or whatever, I don't think, first of all, me, I'm going to use me. I like to use me for examples, me, myself, and I. If God called me to be an evangelist, a missionary, a prophet, a teacher, God is not going to put me with somebody that's totally the opposite. If God delivered me, from being an alcoholic, I'm using me as an example, not saying that I'm not an alcoholic, okay? Come on, don't take things literal. Just listen. Open your ears up and listen. If God called me, if he took away the, uh, if I was an alcoholic, and God took away the desires, the craving for the alcohol, and he delivered me, I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm, I'm living in sobriety now. Listen. God is not finna put me with a man that's a drinker. That would be contrary to his word. That means he would be contradicting himself. God is not going to put me with a, a, a person that drinks like drink alcohol like a fish swimming water if he done delivered me from being an alcoholic. It don't work like that. He is not going to do that. I want you guys to know that, okay? You got to understand that. So when you, if you go out there and you choose that you want to be with somebody, guess what? Be with somebody. But don't force nobody. Don't force your, your mate on somebody else. Don't force nobody else in nobody else's house. If they giving you a place to stay, that is a place for you to stay. Not for you to bring your sex partner in their house. And lay up in their house. It's not right. And I'm really, I really don't care if this video offend anybody. I really don't care. This is this is not the time. I'm not living in a time or an era where I care about what people think. No. Okay. So let me go to the next scripture I have. We're gonna go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. These scriptures go together. Okay? First of all, let's, no, let's go, wait. We're going to find this and then we're going to go back one. Because we need to talk about uh, where the Lord gave Paul the word to write and to tell us that if we can't control ourselves, that we need to marry. That's why people get married, because they can't control themselves. So they get married. Okay, let's see. The King James Version. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not a wife depart from her husband. We want to go to... Do, 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 do. I had pulled these things up, but... Uh, 1 Corinthians... Oh, no, I want to go to the other scripture first. Y'all, I'm everywhere because I'm, I'm serious about these three scriptures right here. Okay, if we if you can go to James chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, it telling us, don't be in a rush to become a teacher, uh, to become my friends. It said, teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standard, and that's true, I was a teacher. Okay, and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouth. If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you will have a perfect person in 
a perfect control life. There is no perfect person in this world. Okay? Now, let's read. It says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is perfect is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. If you can't contain, if you can't control your tongue, you can't control your body. And then it say, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. There is no perfect man. Everybody make mistakes, but we all fall. Okay, we all foul. Now, if we go to James 3 and 2, let's go to James 3 and 2 right quick. I should have had these uh, scriptures out because these Bibles would be so big. Uh, it's okay, though. God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I'm sorry that I have to flip through my Bible, but it's okay. I know where I know where I'm going, and I know what I'm saying. I just have a problem flipping these pages because they're so thin, finding what I need to find. So we going to James, that's what, 3. It says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in words, the same is a perfect man. So if you as a man that don't offend nobody in words and you got a perfect speech every time, he said you're a perfect man. Then it say, and able also to bridle the whole body. So if you're perfect, you're able to control your whole body. That is not true. Now, it say, what you say and what you don't say are both important. Proper speech is not only saying the right words at the right time, but controlling the desire to say what you shouldn't. Examples of wrongly using the tongue includes gossiping, Putting others down, bragging, manipulating, false teaching, exaggerating, complaining, flattering, and lying. Before you speak, ask, is what I want to say true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? James was comparing the damage of the tongue can do to a raging fire. A tongue can cause turmoil even in a raging fire. The tongue wickedness has its source in hell itself. The uncontrolled tongue can do terrible damage. Satan used the tongue to divide peoples. Satan, the devil, uses your tongue to divide people, to put them against one another. Idle words, guys, are damaging because they spread destruction quickly. Mm -mm -mm. And no one can stop the results once they are spoken. We dare to be careless with our words, thinking we can apologize later. But even if we do, the scars remain. A few words spoken in anger can destroy a relationship that took years to build. Before we speak, peoples, remember that words are like fire. You can neither control nor reverse the damage that they can do. And we go to verse 7. It say for... Verse 7 say, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue, but this thing, the tongue, can no man tame. And it is an unruly evil, and it is full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith, with it, we curse minions, hallelujah, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does they found the sin forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter water? And can a fig tree, my brethren, 
bear olive berries, either a vine fizz, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. Can't no fountain give you salt water and fresh water. So, mm. if we need wisdom, we need to ask for wisdom. Genuine wisdom comes from heaven. It comes from God himself. Let's go back to um, 7 Corinthians. Uh, this is about instructions on Christian marriage. Okay, now it says, now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband neither, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife to the husband. The wife has not power over her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband have not power over his own body. So when you become married, you become as one. Don't know either one of you guys got power over your own body. You belongs to each other. You have became, you was two, now you are twain. You became one. Okay? So that's just it. And then they say, defraud ye not the other except it be consent. One eternity later. For times that ye may give yourself fasting and prayer and come together again. That Satan tempt you not for incontingency. Okay? But listen. What did Paul mean when he said that our bodies belong to God? Many people say they have the right to do whatever they want with their own bodies. Although they think this is freedom, they are really enslaved by their own desires. You can say, I, I, I have power and control over my own body. No, God has power and control over your body. When we become Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Therefore, we no longer own our bodies. That we have been brought with a price refers to the slave purchase at auction. Christ, Christ death freed us from sin, but also obligated us to his servant. If you live in a building owned by someone else, you try not to violate the building's rules. So true. Because your body belongs to God, you must not violate his standards for living. Come on, peoples. Come on. Did you not understand what he just said? Listen. It says, it says right here. That uh, I say, therefore, to the unmarried widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. If you cannot contain your body, if you cannot refrain from lust, refrain from uh, the, the pleasurable sin, of sexual fornication, then you, it is better for you to marry than to have sex with somebody that you are not married to and go to hell. Lust will take you to hell. And just because you are lusting in the flesh and you want to be with somebody and you want to lay and sleep with them every night. You want to house with them. You want to play wife with them, play girlfriend or whatever it is. Don't force your lusting, pleasurable self on nobody else. Get your own house and house your man or house your woman, whoever it is. Do get it and provide for that person if that's what you want to do. But don't force nobody else to have to deal with your problem because it's not right. And God is a just God and a good God. The Bible said, for the wages of sin is death. Don't force nobody else, okay? Listen, it tells us that uh, right here, wait, let me see where I was. Sexual pleasure, sexual pressure is not the best motive for getting married. It is better to marry the right person than to burn with lust. Don't let your sexual pressure.
cause you to say I do to somebody that you really mean I don't. Because we have so many narcissists, woman beaters, men beaters, women's it's, it's women's out here that beat men just like it's men's that beat women. So it, it, it is no difference. And I chose to be like God because God, he have no respect a person. And I don't want to have no respect a person. I want to be, I want to be just like Jesus. And I am just like Jesus. Because he died for me. He went on the cross. He was crucified for me. But it say Paul was telling couples who wanted to marry that they should not deny their normal sexual drives by avoiding marriage. This does not mean, however, that people who have trouble controlling their thoughts should marry the first person who come along. It is better to deal with the pressure of desire than to deal with an unhappy marriage. That's all I'm saying. Know what you want. Get sick goals. Stick with those goals. Okay? That's all I have to say about that. But now, let me go to my next uh, scripture that I wanted to go to. Let me go to my next scripture. It say in the New Living Test translation, but if they cannot control themselves, they should go ahead and marry. It is better to marry than to burn. If you can't control the lust of sex, it's better to marry than to burn. But what I'm saying, the reason of this video is, if you meet somebody and you want to be with them. It's time to be grown. It is it's time to be grown and to become responsible and get your own place, get your own job, and, and to be the person that the Lord wants you to be. Wait a minute, guys. What is this? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, baby, let me tell you something. You have hackers that be trying to get on your phone, sending messages like they from the post office. Y'all, it's real out here. We have to open up our eyes and ask God to give us spiritual eyes and spiritual ears so that we can hear what the Spirit is saying to us. It is time to, look, when you get so old, it's time to grow up. It's time to put on your grown woman, grown man underwear and be grown. All I'm saying is this. I have grandkids, great-grandkids, and I want them to, I try to teach them to be young, mature adults. Whatever you want to go for it, to go get it, to work. The Bible, in the Bible, the word says if a man don't work, he don't eat. A man's supposed to be the sole provider. So that's why I totally agree with the word when it say a man that find a wife find a good thing. And I really believe the word when it uh, says that God is not going to put you with somebody unequally yoked. He's not going to have you unequally yoked. Because in one of the scriptures, and I don't know for say, I can't quote scriptures. I'm not a scripture scroller. It says that the blind can't lead the blind. If you blind, there's no way you can lead a group of people if they are blind. All of y'all going to end up in a ditch. It's just impossible. Okay? 
Then by how can you hear except he you uh, except a preacher preach to you? How? Y'all, I might be fumbling. I told you I got a headache, a migraine, but it's okay. But I got to say what I got to say. If I am the type of person, and, and this ain't nothing going on in my life like that. I'm just speaking on the word. When I read the word, then it, 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 it commands me to speak about it. If I am the type of person that open my home up and give you a place to stay, I don't expect when you get in here, the next thing I know, you to sneak your partner up in here. Not so. Uh, you done brought them up in here. That place I gave you to stay is for you. Just like in the Bible where God said, uh, tell your left hand, don't let the right hand know what he's doing. When you pay your tithes, don't nobody need to know how much your tithes is, where they come from, but God. So I have came to a conclusion from studying. I've been studying that word, that particular word about the tithes. When I pay my tithes, I'm just going to pay them. I'm not, I'm not writing them on no envelope saying how much it is. I'm not doing that no more. Because God clearly said in his word, let me pull it up. Let me find that scripture right quick. We got to take the word and go with it. Go forward in the holy word, okay? Where in the King James Bible does it say to the left hand, don't let the right hand know what it's doing? It said, take heed that ye do not alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your father which in heaven. So when you giving your tithes, you paying your tithes, you're being obedient to the word of God. You are paying your tithes. So he said, don't pay your tithes so that nobody can know what you're doing. Because guess what? You're getting your reward right then if you are. The tithes is meant to be paid. That is between you and God. Everybody already know that knows God, that read the word, that is a Christian, that you are supposed to give the first 10% of all of your fruits to God. So as long as you know in your heart, without a doubt, and you are honest, you're paying your 10%. You put that money in church. You don't got to write it on no envelope. You don't have to because they got this thing going on in churches now. That when you pay your tithes, you can get a statement at the end of the year. You're getting it right back. That is not from God. I don't care what they say. Find it in the Bible and show it to me. If you paying God 10%, why is you getting it back at the end of the year? So you really ain't getting him nothing. You are not being obedient to the word. Then it say, therefore, when thou does thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest, let not your left hand know what thy right hand has done. For thine arms may be in secret, so that what that your giving your tithes may be in secret, and that your Father, which is in heaven, that see it, everything in secret, himself, God himself will reward you in the open. Read that full chapter and get an understanding for yourself, Matthew 6. Read it and get it for yourself. We got to start doing what the word of God says. We have to. We have to start doing what the word of God says because if we don't, Baby, we'll fall for anything. People see what it is, is people's is taking, people's is turning a church into a job now. The church is the hospital, it's the house of God. One thing you don't do, you don't sell God's house. You how you gonna sell a church when God said, I upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. But then if you bless with a church, you're gonna take that church and you gonna sell it. You tearing down the kingdom of God. 
it's time to get it right. I, you know, if this video offended you, guess what? Charge it to my head, not my heart, and take it to God. But I'm just letting you know. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Read them scriptures. Study them scriptures. So the first scripture going to be Matthew chapter 6. Read it. Talking about don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. Then the next scripture that I'm going to tell you uh, is, come on. Proverbs 18 and 22. For a good spouse, you find a good life and even more the favor of God. But the King James Version say, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. When you find a wife in the name of Jesus, you find a good thing and you obtain the favor from the Lord. The next scripture I'm going to give you is... One minute. One minute. Uh, Proverbs, 1 Corinthians 7 and 9. But it's three. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than burn. If you can't keep your legs closed and stop laying down with Tom, Dick, Harry, Mary, Martha, and, and everybody else, go get married. So you can give yourself away all you want to to that man. Because if you don't inhale, you're going to lift up your eyes. Okay? The next scripture is coming from James chapter 3, verse 2. And it say this. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And able also to bridle the whole body. He said, for in many things, we offend people all the time when we talk. He said, but if any man offend not in words, that person is perfect. And he is able to control his whole body. That's a lie. There is no perfect person, and we cannot control the whole body. We can't control nothing on this body without God. I hope that you guys got something out of it. Read those scriptures. Read James chapter 3 and all of the scriptures that I gave you. I hope that you really, really, really... Got something out of it. Think about what I said. The Bible said it is married. It is better to marry than to burn. If you can't contain the control, the lust, constrain the lust of the flesh, get married. But the thing about it is if you want a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if you want to be a liar, if you want to be an alcoholic, don't force what you want to be on nobody else. Because like I said, if I know that I am an evangelist, a missionary, uh, a teacher, I'm not going to uh, try to force. I don't force my religion on nobody. I share the word of God because that's what he told us to do. He said, pick up your.